What is going on guys? I uh, just want to quickly say Happy New Year to all you guys. Hopefully you guys have some good New Year's resolutions out there. I know I do. So today is January 2nd, 2022 and it is currently the second day that I have not been a Brooks athlete. I kind of want to make a video sort of just recapping my entire experience from beginning to end of my official Brooks contract. Uh, my contract ran from August 2020 to December 2021 and ended like two days ago. I think it'd be a really good time to just kind of catch you guys up on the entire Brooks experience that I had heading into the new year now to where I'm a free agent, <laughs> unsponsored. Um, I do have two small sponsorships, one with Garmin and one with Mantra Labs. Both of their products I absolutely love. Um, I literally have <laughs> Mantra right here right now. Um, and I'm always wearing my Garmin watch. So I really appreciate those two smaller sponsors for still sticking around with me. I just think it would be a cool idea to kind of let you guys know what was going on in my head during the entire time with, you know, the Becoming a Beast storyline. And um, yeah, so it all began at the beginning of August when I was still in Boulder. I officially signed my contract with Brooks. We had been talking about it since March of 2020 when I was still in college. And then COVID happened. I went out to Boulder that summer, had a really fun time. I grew a mullet. I was kind of acting like a, just a maniac that summer. I was with Ari, I was with Will, I was with all my real good friends. And I continued training because I didn't really know what else to do at that time. But Brooks officially signed me August, 2020. So at the end of August, Will, Ari and I packed up our bags and moved to Seattle. I was in really good shape at the time and Ari wanted to pace me for a mile. So the second day or third day I was in Seattle, met the team, met Danny Mackey, met Sarah the trainer, all for the first time at like 10 a.m. at a random track in Seattle to do a mile time trial. It was kind of weird, a uh, weird way to meet them and uh, I ended up running 4.02 for that time trial at 10 a.m. with just Ari pacing me. And I was like, you know what? I'm in pretty good shape. That was, I was satisfied with that, you know. I had run sub four in the past, but to just kind of go out there with literally no race environment and do that was a really good telltale, I thought, for the future of my time with Brooks. So then I ran that and then shut down the rest of my season because Danny, the coach, was starting to coach me at that time. So all of September, we were just hanging out in Seattle. I met Allie. Um, in that month as well but from the running side of things kind of started training again and then we had our first official practice in October of 2020 and uh, I was in pretty good shape at the time because I had taken a little bit of time off but I was healthy before all that so you know I was working out with the big boys at the time Henry, Josh, uh, Isaac, Dave we were all working out together for the most part and I was keeping up in workouts. I was feeling really good at the time. Uh, I really liked the team. I was kind of a little quiet at first because you know these were some pretty big time athletes and I didn't want to disrespect them in any sort of way and um, I, <laughs> I cut my mullet off before the first big practice. And um, But yeah, so I was kind of not close with anyone on the team within the first month but uh, why, you know, you're not going to be. I, these people weren't my friends before, so you know, I was having a really good time. We went to our first team camp in October, and then got back from team camp, and boom, end of October, I got COVID. But I just wanna make this video clear up some things, update you guys on what is going on, what is the future. I got COVID-19. Um, coronavirus um, and that was just at the time like the most devastating thing for multiple reasons uh, you know I got COVID kind of before a lot of other people started getting it I was in that big wave in end of October early November when like all of a sudden it blew up and a bunch of people got it and it was just really uncomfortable from the team perspective because who is this YouTube kid <laughs> that shows up and a month into practice gets COVID. So I felt really bad about that. The team couldn't work out together for 10 days. I had to quarantine. And on top of all of that, I was very sick. Um, COVID was no joke when I got it. Uh, 
I honestly feel like since I've had COVID uh, for a long period of time, like my body just felt a little bit weaker and uh, less resistant to diseases coming in because I found myself getting sick a lot easier after I got COVID. So it really was such a wrench because before I got it, I was in such a good place. I was keeping up with the boys in the workouts and I just felt good. And you know, it is what it is. That's just what happens. It's just life. So after I got COVID, I slowly worked my way back. I was able to kind of latch on to the back of workouts. I wasn't quite keeping up with the guys anymore at that point, but I did do a time trial at the end of 2020. I had Ari pace me and I ran a four mile time trial in 19 minutes. So 445 pace for four miles on a track. I was pretty happy about it. I felt like I bounced back from COVID really quickly in like six, seven weeks for the most part and was in a good spot heading into the first camp in Albuquerque. 2021 rolls around and we immediately drive to Albuquerque, which was a three day drive because no one was flying at that point because of you know COVID stuff. And I got to Albuquerque. I had been at altitude in Boulder, so I was sort of used to that, but Albuquerque was definitely a lot more different than Boulder. A lot more boring, I would say. Uh, we were more locked in. I was living with Brandon and Isaac at the time. I got really close with those guys, which was a lot of fun. And my memories of January in Albuquerque were really great. Um, I was pushing like 75 miles that whole month. I started to work out with the guys pretty much all the time again. I would do maybe one or two less reps than them, which isn't uncommon for a rookie on the beasts. But for the most part, I was hitting workouts well. I was starting to really work on my diet. I was eating more protein. Things were going well. And it, you know, altitude got difficult at times because it just fatigues you in a way that kind of sneaks up on you. But for the most part, I had a great month in January, probably one of my best months of training ever. So at the end of January, I was super pumped. And then February rolls around and I remember, I, I titled a video beginning to belong because we did a track workout in February where I nailed it and I was like, you know what, like I am truly becoming a beast. Like I feel like I'm keeping up with these guys and I'd become so much closer with the team. That's what camp does. And I just was so close with all of the guys on the team and was just having a blast. But I did this workout, felt awesome after. And then about a week later, we did another workout with some hard strides at the end of it. And I was pushing my strides a little too hard and ended up nicking my post tib. So I ended up getting hurt, which was super, super annoying. This was at the end of February and we had a race coming up still. We uh, were going to race early March at the sound running meet in LA. So I ended up getting hurt. I take a week off, I'm cross training, and I was kind of back. Sarah, the trainer, did an awesome job getting me to the start line for that first race. I ended up kind of half injured running 149 for the 800, which would be my best season opener. And I was really, I was happy about that because I kind of pushed through the adversity of that small injury I got and uh, was still able to run a pretty decent 800. The plan originally was for me to run a 15 at the time, not an 800, because I was very strong and I didn't, I hadn't done much speed stuff, but I ended up only doing the 800 because I took a week off, two or three weeks out from the race, so it just made sense for me to run the 800, do it almost as a rust buster. And after that race, we had a down week, and then I started running again mid-March, and then that's when my injury, which hadn't fully healed yet, got really bad. And I had to take about three to four weeks off fully from running. And <laughs> at that point, it was, it was just, it was really frustrating because, you know, like I said, I'm this rookie trying as best as I can to film videos for the team, trying to keep up with these guys when I already had COVID and just, this other thing comes on, and this was a crucial point in the season where people were starting to take off with fitness, and I felt like I had put in really a solid base work that was gonna help me for that spring. 
but pretty much lost it all in the month of March. Um, I probably didn't cross train as well as I could have. I've never really been injured for more than like a week. Uh, this is the first injury I've ever had that was technically like long term injury, which was only like a month. But um, so I just, I didn't, I don't think that I did a good job of taking care of my body with it. Probably should have done different type of cross training stuff. I was sort of just doing bike workouts. So April rolls around and we head back to Albuquerque for our second camp and I was in absolutely horrible shape at this point. I was just coming back from that injury thankfully so I could actually go to the camp. Um, but being at altitude when you're in crappy shape is so, so miserable. Um, at this time I, I did like a workout with the girls team at first and uh, it's just really such a bummer. I just remember the month of April being such a bummer for me because I was doing like 45 to 50 mile weeks trying to scramble some sort of fitness together, trying to still, you know, come off happy for videos and stuff. But deep down I was just like, I'm not happy right now and like being at altitude when you're out of shape like that, it just sucks. Um, and during that March to April transition period, you know, a lot of the guys on the team really elevated their fitness. So the gap was went from like, you know, here to here in terms of where I was compared to the rest of the guys on the team. So the whole month of April, I was just on my own essentially with what I could do. And, you know, I was trying to help out the guys as best as I could in the workouts, but I was just so bad at the time that it was just, it was, it was tough. Um, and I had never felt that out of shape before. And with the altitude as well, it just, it was, it was really tough for me. So we get to the end of April, May rolls around, and the plan was to do an 800 and then just see what happens from there to see where my fitness is at. I did an 800 in LA and I ended up running 151. And, you know, at that point I was like, this is bad. I'm not in good shape. All those negative thoughts were kicking in and I was really trying to just keep staying positive, keep hoping that the fitness would come eventually, that some of the previous stuff I had done would stack up. So kept a positive attitude and then towards the end of May I ran a 1500 race and then another 1500 race. I ran 344, then five days later I ran 345, which again about a 403 mile conversion, so not my best day or even close to it. Um, for the fitness I was in, honestly, it wasn't that bad. It's just tough because those were the two races I was looking at very early on in the season, like in January, that I was like, that's where I'm gonna run 336, 337, even 338. Those were the races I was aiming for. And then just to basically show up there in pretty bad shape, even though I was trying as hard as I could, it was really, it was tough. Um, and at this point in the season, my thoughts shifted from, you know, excitement and like, I'm just excited to be here to like, I'm definitely gonna lose my contract if I don't run fast this summer. And that really weighed a lot on me. It was, it was really tough. Um, and it was really awesome seeing my teammates run well, you know, uh, all of them were running incredible at this point and I was really happy for them. But it's tough at the same time, you know, you don't want to be the person that sucks at the time. And I was, and there was, I wouldn't call it pressure. I didn't feel like it was pressure. I just felt like I was letting a lot of people down and I felt like it was just really disappointing and, and just frustrating because timing is everything in running. And I literally was just in bad shape. You can't do much with six weeks of buildup. I turned around my attitude at the end of May after I ran 345 and said, you know what, I'm not making the trials, That's it's over in that regard. Let's put together some good mileage and try to run fast this summer. So the month of June, I had a good month. I was having fun again, built up my mileage a little bit to about 65. It was about my third month of consistent training. So I was like, you know, I'm getting somewhere. I worked out with David Timlin a lot. He was sort of in the same position as me. He's run very similar PRs to me and he also didn't make the trial, so we were working out together in the summer, uh, crushing workouts, 
I started to get in pretty good shape and was really looking forward to, you know, taking a stab at some sub four attempts this summer and, um, you know, earning that contract to, to stay with the team. So the month of June was all just good training. I went to the trials in mid-June, supported the team, supported Allie, um, and that was, that was tough. It was, you know, I, I had a fun time at the trials and it's like I said though, it's you want to be there. You want to be, you, you, you feel like you should be there. I didn't feel like I deserved to be there, but I wanted to be there. And it's, it's disappointing when you're kind of a known name in the sport that is sort of just walking around at the trials, talking to people, but not competing. You know, I felt like very, very left out and like, I wasn't mad at anyone, but circumstances. You know, one thing that was fun was watching my teammates really do well. We had three different people get fifth at the trials. Ali B, Henry Wynn, and Brandon Kidder. And, you know, other other people ran really well as well. Ali got eighth. Dave Ribich made the US final in the 15 when he's literally a 5K guy right now. So it was cool. It was cool watching my teammates do well. That's, that's really the only positive I can take away from that experience. And, I guess it made me hungrier, it made me, you know, want to commit to myself a little bit better and stay healthy for a longer period of time. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry, this is a long video, it's deep. So the month of July comes around and I was in really good shape at this point. I was really excited to show some fitness off and finally try to break four again, earn that contract with Brooks. And I ended up racing at the end of July, July 18th and the day before the race, I woke up, felt sick. The classic, you feel sick the day before the race, you feel sick the day of the race, and underperformed. I ran 403, and you know, thought that, you know, the, oh, the just I was so nervous before the race, that's why I got sick. But I, that hadn't happened to me in a long time. Then a few days later, I'm still feeling horrible. I go in, I have a sinus infection and I ended up not really being able to run for another like two or three days. So I basically took a week off after I ran 403 and that race is what mentally killed me. Uh, that like, that was when it was over for me in terms of like the hope. I, I remember being so upset after that race because I'm not even, I wasn't feeling bad for myself. I was just like, why did I get sick right before the race? What, like this is the third time that I've had something go just wrong at the worst possible time this year. I just was so exhausted at that point. I just remember being like, <laughs> every time I try to make this work again, I keep having another thing go wrong. I remember after that, I was just, I wanted to end my season. Um, I started going down a really dark road at the end of July. And August was a really, really tough month for me. Um, I tried racing one more time, ran 410, and I wasn't even mad after that race. I was just like, I'm over it. Um, I, like, there's no other way to, for me to describe it other than that my body had nothing left to give. I, I just was, I was pathetic. I was so emotionally drained. I was so physically drained. The, the monkey on the back of thinking about that contract all the time was just getting to me and I was having no fun and you know it was fun watching Josh medal at the Olympics that was probably by far the biggest highlight of the month for me but it was like other than that you know it was really depressing and um, I truly mean that like I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. Comment down below if you know what I'm talking about when it's just not working. And I think from what I've said so far, there's no knock on Danny Mackey and his training methods. It was just so much circumstantial crap that went wrong on, on just no one's fault. It wasn't Brooke's fault, it wasn't my fault. Um, end of August rolls around and like I said, I don't want to get into details, but I was just going down a road of, you know, it was a bad road I was going down and I needed to get out of Seattle and you know we our practice ended at the end of August anyway because that was the last time people raced so we had the month of September off and 
I knew at this point I hadn't run the standards to continue being on a beast. I'm not gonna say any details on the exact times, but I basically had to run some times. I figured if I ran close to those times, I would be invited back to be on the team, but I obviously I ran so bad the whole year that it wouldn't make sense. So I knew I wasn't going to be re-signed at this point. Um, so I went home and it was the first time I saw my family in about a year, which was really nice. It was really nice rekindling that relationship with my parents um, to just help me in a really crappy, uncertain time where I felt like such a failure. Um, so that was September of this year. And that's when I officially talked to Brooks and I knew I wasn't coming back at that point, and I said how my dad was gonna to begin to coach me. September was a very, very tough month, but it was it was a very necessary month for, for my growth as a person, and just to kind of face that failure head on, and, you know, accept the situation at hand, which was that I wasn't going back to Brooks, but I still was on Brooks until the end of the year, so, it was nice to know that my dad was officially coaching me at this point and we could just work at my pace for a little bit. So from a training perspective, I slowly built up in the month of September, started doing just you know easier strength stuff just to get some sort of base back. So that was the month of September and then I decided to stay home for another month in October so I could really get used to my dad's training. So I stayed home in the month of October as well and, you know, just felt, felt like a new person again. I kind of felt like I jumped out of that rough patch where I was just really unhappy. You know, started posting videos again. You guys kept commenting that my videos felt refreshing like how they used to be and that was, that was a fun, that was really a fun aspect of it. Uh, learning to love YouTube again, learning to just accept where I was at and, and I started to get in good shape again. It's crazy how it works that way. So I got in pretty good shape and then headed back to Seattle for the month of November. Had some really good workouts in November, hung out with my friends again in Seattle, met up with all the beasts a few times and uh, hung out with them. At the end of the day, we're all normal people. So your friends who you're friends with. So some of my friends are on the beast, some of them are not on the beast. I was training in November, went home for Thanksgiving, did the five mile Pequot race and ran 24.19, which is around 4.51, 4.52 pace for five miles, which was awesome. I was really happy about that. Um, personal best for me on that course by 40 seconds. So I was like, all right, three months of good training. Let's go. September, October, November were just really good transition months for me. It was, it was really what I needed at the time. And I was really excited about that because I was like, all right, I'm, I'm back. I've kind of got a shot here. You know, I promise all you guys I'm going to give it like a real go at just doing it on my own now. So I was like, all right, step one complete. The December 2021 rolls around this last month um, and I was doing a lot of traveling. So I spent the first two weeks of the month traveling to see Ari race his uh, second professional triathlon. And it was really just, it was great catching up with him again. Um, just rekindling old friendships with, you know, guys who I really appreciate. So hung out with him and Johnny Pace in LA for a week after that. And I probably had the best workout of my life in LA. I did two miles in 919, and then three minutes rest, and then three by mile in 448 with 90 second rest. So I had that workout and I was like, all right, I am in better shape than I ever was with the Beast, which is crazy because, you know, I'm just doing it alone now. Um, I think that that should speak volumes to people out there who are giving it a shot. I had that really good workout in LA, then came back to Seattle and had some, you know, days where I felt crummy. And then my dad told me, uh, we're gonna do two down weeks, which I just did, two weeks of 45 miles, no workouts just to reset the body a little bit for phase two of 2022, and then we're gonna hit it. So, guys, that's that's where I'm at right now. Um, I'm, I'm excited, and I'm glad that you guys could kinda 
get inside my head a little bit with where I was at in the whole Brooks contract. And yeah, my contract with Brooks ended two days ago. Um, I want to quickly say thank you so much to Brooks, to Matt Weiss, to Carly, to Julie, to Danny, all the people that helped make that happen. Um, I really appreciate it and I'm sorry that it couldn't work out longer, um, that we had to go our separate ways, but uh, I will forever be grateful for my experience as a Brooks athlete. The show must go on, so, you know, I know you guys are going to be asking specifics in the comments. I'll be answering questions below about what shoes am I going to start wearing, what, what, what gear am I going to wear. Maybe I'll whip out some of my Nike Georgetown gear now that I'm unsponsored. Anyway, I could keep rambling all day, but I just want to say that even the people who are at the higher level, above my level, they struggle too and I struggle, and then people below my level struggle. Everyone struggles, and there's so many ups and downs. And in my experience, the best thing that you can do to help yourself get out of a really low state is see your family, talk to your family, and just reset that way. So that's my advice on that, and that's really helped me um, get out of a very dark place. So guys, this was one of the longest videos I've ever made. I'm really appreciative that you guys could stick around for the whole time. Buy your mantra, buy your Garmin watches, and we'll see you next time.